Year 8 student Flory is really interested in becoming a vet. She spent the day with us here at Radcliffe Animal Centre to ask our vets and Nottingham Uni vet students some key questions on just what it takes to become a vet. Just how hard is it to get into vet school and what qualifications do you need? I think it is difficult because you need to think of several things, not just the grades. They are really important, but also they want to have a good vet at the end of the course. They want you to be good in people skills and have a lot of experience to make sure that you actually want to be there. Getting the grades, it does vary slightly between universities as to what they want in your A-levels. Um, I got in with AAB, but I know that a lot of other universities may want slightly higher grades. But it's really about getting your work experience to give you the best shot. Do you still have a chance if you didn't get in vet school for the first time round? Yeah, most definitely. I think um, if you don't get into vet school, it's like that try and try again. There's the prelim course at Nottingham, which gives an advantage to the people that either didn't do the right A-levels or um, have extenuating circumstances or anything like that. Also, doing a gap year, you actually get more opportunity to do extracurricular stuff and just boosting your personal statement. How long is the course? Do you start learning about animals straight away? So our course is five years, but it can vary between universities. We were very much hands-on and started animal handling from the first day. I remember my first day of vet school, they got a dog in for us to start practicing handling and looking at different parts on the body. Are all vet school courses the same and what made you choose Nottingham? I chose Nottingham because of its location, but also because our campus is quite close-knit and in the countryside, which I enjoyed, but other universities may be more city-based. Nottingham is quite a practical course and I enjoyed the fact that we were practical from the beginning. At the end of the day, you get a vet qualification wherever you go, but some are perhaps more practical-based compared to academic-based. It's really what you think and where you think you'd fit in best. Is it normal to feel a bit squeamish during operations when you first go at them? Before I went to vet school, most definitely. I think in first year, yeah, you do feel a bit squeamish, but after, like now in fifth year, you don't. You just kind of get on with it and you know what stuff is and yeah. What's a typical day like being a vet? Well, it can vary from wherever you end up working but if you're a small animal vet, um, most of the time you start off with consults in the morning and admitting your operations for the day. And then you will do your consultations, so check any animals, anything that needs to be brought into the practice for the day will stay with you for the day. And then you'll do your operations in the middle of the day most of the time. The animals will recover from their anaesthetics um, over the period of lunchtime normally, and then they'll be ready to go home by the evening. You'll probably normally have some consultations in the evening as well. Um, so normally it's an 8.30 to 6.30 day. Obviously there's out of hours as well to be covered. Do you have to work with all types of animals? So it, when you qualify, you'll be qualified to work with all types of animals and then you can go on to do further certification if you want to be a specialist in certain fields. Um, but when I graduated, I worked as a farm practitioner as well as being a small animal vet as well. But some vets will specialise and become zoo vets, some vets will become marine vets as well. There's lots of diversification that you can go into. What's the best thing about being a vet for you? So for me being a vet, um, the reason I wanted to do it was because I wanted to work with animals and I get to do that on a daily basis but I also get to make a difference to their lives, not only you know seeing them when they're puppies and going through the whole of their life to the, sadly the end days as well, but also making sure throughout that period that they're as fit and healthy and as happy as they can be for the whole of their lives. What do you think is the worst part of your job? The worst part of my job I would say is always having to deal with animals that have not been treated in the best way. What we're all striving for is animals to have the best welfare and well-being that they can have. And sadly, some animals don't receive that. Sometimes on the flip side to that though, the best part about it is seeing those animals be rehabilitated and being able to be rehomed and actually getting the care that they need. Is it just important to like animals or do you need any other skills? There's lots of skills that I think are important in being a vet. Sadly, it's not just about liking animals, but that's obviously a big part of it. 
Um, it's also important to like humans because we have to deal with a lot of members of the public, a lot of people in the veterinary team as well that you work with. Um, it's important to be organised, you have to take on quite a lot of work during your day, it's a busy life, a busy schedule. You have to be reliable so that people can come to you in the time of need um, and you have to be compassionate, you have to, you're dealing with life and death sadly on a daily basis. When you graduate as a vet, what kind of jobs are available? So, I mean, traditionally you think of a vet as being a vet in a practice treating people's pets or farm animals or horses, but there's all sorts of other job roles out there for us as well. Um, so for example, I teach, I'm a, I'm a university teacher, so I um, have final year students who uh, I mentor here at the RSPCA and at other char charities. Um, you could work in the pharmaceutical sector, in research, uh, or on the technical support team. Uh, we also have vets who work um, in the food industry where they oversee uh, hygiene and public health and those sort of problems too. Once you're qualified, do you stop learning? What sort of things can you do to develop and progress your career? Well, as being part of a vet, you have to do certain continued professional development, which means going on courses. It also means um, doing certain amounts of reading and, and development for your own career there. But also, there's loads of diversification that you can go into. So for me, I've been a general practitioner, but becoming an RSPCA vet is so different that actually I've done some particular courses that help me specialise in the role that I'm doing now. But you never stop learning. It's a part of the requirements of being a vet, but it's also really good because we like to learn, we like to develop our skills, and as veterinary medicine changes, we need to keep up to date with that as well. Besides getting done results, what also helps you get into vet school? I think really doing a range of work experience helps, so maybe something farm related um, in a small animal practice, but also things like volunteering with wildlife um, and also people skills really. I remember I used to volunteer at a community lunch, so things like that just to make sure that you're going to be ready to speak to people when you become a vet. Are you happy with your current career choice? Well, there was nothing else I was wanting to be when I was growing up, and I'm very pleased that I chose that career now. I love working with animals, so it's given me that role, but working with the RSPCA, I get to get some diversification of my role here, and um, also working with the students. It's great to see them developing um, from final years into hopefully what will be soon to be newly qualified vets. Do you feel your job is worthwhile and makes a difference? Yeah, I really do. Um, I mean, for me, as a, as a teacher, my job's satisfying on two levels. So not only do we see the pets here uh, and the pets in the other, cl other clinics where I work that come in unwell and go home better, there's a satisfaction from the owner that, that that's happened. Uh, but for me, teaching as well, I also have the satisfaction of having, a, having students come through the clinics who go away from us better and more capable than when they started with us. I think especially working at the RSPCA we can see the difference we make, you know, the animals come in and they've not necessarily had the best treatment beforehand, we can provide whatever healthcare needs they have and wellbeing needs to make sure um, their welfare improves um, before they can go to their new homes and get rehabilitated. I think it's really important to emphasise that to the students and actually being able to teach students those fundamental needs of what an animal needs before it can go through the rehabilitation process really makes a difference to the students as well. So yeah, I do think my job is very worthwhile.